With this exercise, we're going to practice using our compass. So let's take a look at the compass in the first place. When you have your new compass, you will have a wheel that you will turn in order to open and close the legs. Do not pull the legs, that's bad, okay? You're gonna just turn this wheel. If you try to yank on these to make it go faster, you're gonna end up pulling one of these off of the turn and it won't make accurate circles. Additionally, you have one sharp pointed end and one graphite end that is sharpened to a chisel point, okay? The chisel should be closer, um, it should be coming inward toward the center, towards where they two meet. If your compass lead is dull, okay, if your graphite is dull, that's where your sharpening pad comes in. You are going to set your pencil, or sorry, your compass, at an angle that's either 30 degrees, I like the 30 degree angle, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to be a sharp angle. And then you just brush it back and forth over that sharpening pad. Okay, sorry. And get it to a nice sharp point. Also, when you close the legs on this, you want the very tip of your compass to be slightly longer than where your graphite is. Okay, that's because this green mat that is on your desks and on your practice boards at home, it is self-healing to a point, um, mainly because you're able to penetrate, you're able to stab into that, so it holds your compass still. Those of us who have, who have used a compass in math class on those really hard desks, some of you might have noticed that it works better if you put it, a notebook underneath it, so you have multiple pages to stab through. And that's because that sharp end is meant to puncture so that when you twirl it, it works out nice and even and it won't slip. Okay, so that's really important. So looking at our drawing, we have multiple center points that we're going to be using to draw various diameters of circles. When you see a circle with a line all the way through it, that stands for diameter, the total distance from one end of the circle to the other end of the circle. Okay, so looking at these, we're first going to want to figure out what diameter we need. But when we set our compass, we actually need the radius, which is the distance from the center point to the outside of one edge. Okay, here's a fun spoiler. Your center lines need to extend beyond the circle. So don't just try to set your compass to the length of the line. That's not going to work. Okay, so I'll start with something easy. We have a one inch diameter circle. And to find the radius, we just need half of that. So radius equals one half. Okay, to get half of one and three fourth inch radius, that is going to be seven eighths for our radius. Okay, one and one fourth. And it's okay to write down the radius next to each of these if that helps you keep everything straight. So after you find the radius, you're going to need an index card. Okay, I have a bunch of these index cards in front of my desk where um, my document camera is. So you can come up and grab them as needed or just pull out an index card or sheet of notebook paper. So when you are setting your compass, you never, ever, ever want to set it up against your actual um, measuring scale. These are made of a very soft plastic and it'll start chipping away at it. So the best way to set your compass is to use a scrap of paper that you can use more than once. I'm going to create a small dash on one of the lines. Okay, that's going to be my center point. And then I'm going to measure out the distance of my first radius, which is one half inch. So I'm going to come here, measure one half inch, and I'm also going to label it because if I need one half inch later on, I already have it measured out. I don't have to do it again. So now that I have that down, 
I can set my compass. Okay, this seems like extra steps, but really it will save you a lot of frustration in the long run. So I'm stabbing the sharp end into that zero point. Make sure it's directly in it. And then when you set your compass, you're gonna twirl the leg, but here's one extra thing to make sure you have it in the correct distance. I do a practice twirl, okay? See how it's just slightly to the right of my measured point? That means I'm not quite accurate. So I'm gonna just barely move the knob and now it's going through the center of my mark. I can pick that up and take a moment to place it directly where those two center points intersect. Okay, and then one last trick. You should have your compass tilting while you twirl, okay? This knob on top is meant, I'm gonna scoot my camera just a little bit so you can see this a little better, okay? This is meant for you to hold, and since I am gonna twirl counterclockwise, I'm going to lean it in the direction that I am spinning. Okay, you will get a clean circle every single time. Okay, let's try that one more time. We're gonna go with seven eighths. I'm gonna measure my radius is seven eighths. I'm going to set my compass to that distance. Yep. Okay. Now I'm going to take the time to make sure that my center point is where that punctures through. And I just push it down just a little bit. You'll feel it kind of um, piercing the mat. Don't like jam it in there, but make sure that you feel it. Just kind of start piercing the mat. And then, sorry, I let go there. Okay. And that's how it works. You are going to do this exercise. You're going to draw each of these circles, okay? There is a warning. The smaller the circle, the harder it is to control with the compass, okay? They need to stay circular. Some people start kind of getting kind of iffy and they're rushing. Do not rush, it's not a race. We're learning how to do this correctly so we can do it correctly all the time. Take your time. Don't give me ovals and make sure that you have a sharp compass point in order to do this. Use eighth inch guidelines and letter your name, then turn it in.